you know, it seems like storm update videos is getting pretty regular. So last night we had another storm and we lost a limb. Thank goodness it did not hit trouble. But y'all, now we have fence repair to do. So far, this is the only storm damage I have found, but that doesn't mean there's not more. Um, it seems like we can't just get a regular rain anymore. It's got to be a storm. So y'all stay tuned. Well guys, today's video is going to be an older video. So I'm gonna start you off with an update. So we're headed out to the okra patch and um, we did some pruning when we first filmed this video. And it was about as tall as I am while I'm sitting down. So now it has actually grown quite a bit more so I'm going to give you a different view from it today. Uh, we still have to come out here and harvest more of the okra so when we first filmed it the okra was probably this tall and now it's that tall. Don't know why this end is stunted but this end is a little bit stunted and guys I'm going to walk through here with my bucket to kind of give you an idea what it looks like. So it is chest high right through here. So I'm gonna sit down on the ground and give you another view. Hang on. There's a place up here I can sit down. Yeah, there's the gap. All right, so I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so that's one direction, and this is the other direction. And I came through again this morning pruning off more leaves. You can see where I have pruned off leaves and any growth that comes into the aisle pretty much. There's one or two that I still got to cut, um, but any growth at the bottom, I've just been cutting it off because I don't want growth at the bottom. Um, I've been pruning leaves up towards the top as well um, because it lets the sunshine into the blooms and it allows the bugs and things to see those blooms so that they can get pollinated. So yeah, I just wanted to show you. So let me flip the camera around and give you the new angle. So yeah, it's all taller than I am now. <laughs> and if I was actually sitting in the spot where there wasn't a break, I would be sitting in the shade and that's actually how I like to harvest the okra sitting down because it's in the shade because guys this this bit there is no trees there is no shade except for what the okra produces Let me turn the camera around. One of the best tips that I can give you, space your okra. Everywhere you see a clump, that's your spacing. <laughs> Don't do what I did and have four plants. Yes, guys, four plants in that little space. Technically, there is six plants right there and there should only be one in that space because let me show you so this plant here creates a canopy that intertwines with the next canopy guys 
that's how far apart they are. My elbow to my hand. Okay? So, yeah. You need space between your okra plants. We kind of messed up this year when we planted ours. I kind of walk along and just drop seeds. And believe it or not, I have actually thinned these out. Yeah. And then I came back through and thinned again. And I just cut some of the plants off at the ground. Um, so I really, really, really overseeded. Now, we seed directly into the soil when the ground starts warming up. Because okra has a tap root. And you could damage that in planting. But also what we have noticed is that the okra that's planted from the seed and the okra that was transplanted kind of grow at the same time. And the okra that grows from seed always seems to do better for us than the transplants. So here in the hot, humid south, we just sow the seed directly into the ground when it's about time for okra to be planted. Um, it doesn't really give us any sort of a head start to, to transplant because the transplants are going to go into a shock. And this is out in the field where there's no water source out here. So we plant right before it rains and that gets the seeds started. All right, guys. Next up, pruning. Hey, guys. We are out here in the okra field today. That's what you see behind me, and that's what's in front of me, too. I'm about halfway down the row. Uh, Y'all come down here and join me, though. See what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm sitting on the ground. I'm at ground level under here. So why am I at ground level, and why is there all these leaves? Well, I am an okra pruner. Yep. I don't prune very high. I stay below where the okra is producing. Um, typically, this year I have not done as good of a job, but typically, you see that branch right there? I would be cutting that off because I don't want branches that low to the ground. Um, but this year I'm doing an experiment. We're gonna see what them branches do because every okra plant out here has grown like a bush this year. But guys, look at all the okra. Now, that pod there is probably too big. But that pod there is fine. This one's fine. This one's fine. And a lot of these in this bucket are fine. And look at all this. And there's just okra for miles and miles. Maybe not miles. That might be an exaggeration. But we are pruning the bottom leaves. So let me move down the row a little piece and show you what we're doing. Oh, okay. So get down here where we're at. So I'm just coming in here. You see this leaf? Pretty bad shape. See this leaf growing up beside another plant? See that leaf growing up beside another plant? Now, what do I do with the leaves I've cut? I'm leaving them on the ground protection. I'm going to cut this one right here because it's to the aisle. And that's as far as up as I'm going to go today on that one. We're going to come do this one the same way. We're just going to cut off these bottom leaves. We're going to open it up to sunshine a little bit. Um, we want it to put production into the okra and not the plant. Same reason you cut off those bushes. So, yeah, there we go. So, y'all let me know in the comments if you prune your okra or not. Maybe give it a try one year, see if it does you any good. Now, I've heard a lot of people, they'll take and cut these off and whip the okra. Have you heard of that? Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, stay tuned. All right, guys, so while we're in here, let's talk about harvesting okra. Notice I've got scissors in my hand pods ready to be picked so I'm just gonna snip it off yep now a note of caution you see this part right here that is the top of the plant this is where the future of your okra is do not cut that off okay notice I've got a bloom about to happen and I've got a small pod of okra right there now that pod if this was Clemson spineless I'd be picking it 
but that pot is too small for here. So we're gonna keep on going down the line and we're gonna cut off some more okra. And then I'll come back and pick it up. A lot of this is too big. I know it. All right. This is this is actually still tender, guys. Do y'all see how big that pot is? Now, not all pods this big are still tender, but this pod is still tender, surprisingly. That is why I grow burgundy. This one is not tender. This one is not tender. This is on the small side for where I usually harvest. But this is a good pod. Alright, and like I said, while I come through here, I'm just trimming these bottom branches as I go through. I am not cutting the top. I am cutting off any of the stalks that may be forming at the bottom. Like this one right here, we're going to cut this off because I don't want this one growing. Um, it's too close to this one. Um, so I'm trying to kill this one. It was too close to pull up, so I didn't want to disturb the roots. But um, let's see if I can find one. Okay, right there's one. This is a branch coming off the side. This low to the ground, I don't want that branch. So I'm just going to cut it off. Now, if you cut this off for some reason, these branches will actually create a new harvest but they take away from the energy at the top in the meantime. So you decide if you want the branches now or later. I want some branches now, but I don't want them at the ground. Um, and I'm keeping the ground clear. Um, all the leaves we have cut, they're down on the ground stopping weeds. Y'all look down through there. That looks good, don't it? All of that is done. None of that is done. We got a long way to go, guys. But at least all that is done. So y'all, I'm gonna get to it. And we'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, carrying on with our food preservation theme for today's video, we are going to put up some okra in the freezer. Now we are going to actually freeze it with the meal on it. Um, I know I've showed this in the past, but we're going to show it again. So I have this book that's put out by the Extension Service. Um, some of you may know I did work at the Extension Office for a little bit doing 4-H and stuff. Um, but you also know that I am not 100% following the guidelines occasionally. Um, so this is going to be one of those. I'm going to go with what they say in here, but I am going to tweak it a little bit just so you know. Alright, so I looked up how to, how to preserve my okra. And they list canning, drying, freezing, and milled freezing. So I like to freeze mine with the meal already on it. So I looked it up in here and I found the page it was on and I went through their instructions and the instructions say all that. It says to use the pods, um, smooth varieties don't split as easy as the ridge varieties. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's some that are more star-shaped than a smoother pod. Um, so if you've got a star-shaped, expect it to split. Now, we grow burgundy, which when you cook burgundy, it's going to turn green regardless. Um, but we grow burgundy because our pods can be longer um, and still tender. So where Clemson Spineless this would probably be too big for Clemson Spineless. Um, this is still tender. Um, we've got some bigger pods over here that are still tender. We sometimes have pods this big that are still tender. We have had them this big and still tender. Um, this one is still tender, surprisingly. Um, so I'm just going to go through these steps today and show you what to do. Now, we've already washed and all that stuff and cleaned our okra. Um, we've mostly separated, but I can tell you when I cut, if I hear a crunch, 
that is a pod that's tough. Um, so if you don't like the tough pods, then don't cut up the crunchy pods. Um, I am going to change this a little bit though. I am not going to blanch my okra. I never have. I'm just gonna put it straight into the meal, throw it in a Ziploc bag, take all the air out. If you've got a vacuum seal bag, awesome. Um, we've got one, but it's just too much work to drag it out at the moment. So we're going to throw it in a Ziploc bag and we're going to throw it in the freezer. So hopefully you've had a chance to read all this. If you're not in Alabama, check with your extension office. They may have a book just like this. Um, if not, Ball Preservation um, has one. They've got the ball canning book and all that. Um, there's other books out there. There's websites out there. There's YouTubers out there that will show you how they put up their food. So today we're going to show you my method on freezing okra milled. Alright, so like we talked about, we go through and we cut it. So I always cut my tips off. And then I cut it up into pieces that I want to eat. Now, if you want little bitty pieces, cut it into little bitty pieces. If you don't want little bitty pieces, don't cut it into little bitty pieces. All right? So then we take it and we throw it in our bowl. We put some meal in our bowl. So before I started, I put this in the bottom of my bowl. Okay? So this is cornmeal that's already got flour in it. Um, this is what we use for our cornbread and stuff. Um, so that's what we use. Use what you want. Um, but then I just throw it in the bowl and I stir it from the bottom up. And you can see where I am bringing up more cornmeal to cover stuff. Okay? So that is how we do it. Now, I am also not going to lay it on a single layer sheet in the freezer because uh, honestly that's more time than I got um, so we will just be putting this into small quart size or pint size even Ziploc bags and sealing it up so y'all stay with us while we do this and then we'll go to seal it up for you This one has a slight crunch, but it's not enough to not use, so we're going to go ahead and use it. anybody knows why I should blanch my okra before I freeze it, please feel free to tell me because if it's a valid reason and I need to be blanching it, let me know. Um, because mostly I just don't have the time to blanch it. I've never had any problems with not blanching it. Um, so if somebody wants to tell me why I'm supposed to blanch it, let me know in the comments below. Now see that has a crunch. Y'all hear that? That is way too much of a crunch. So we're going to put that one in our compost bin. 
and we're going to clean up and we're going to stir this in again. Make sure everything is good and coated. All right, let me clean up. We'll be right back. All right, we will be using what we have. Make sure they're freezer bags or make sure that they are vacuum sealable bags. Um, so we were going to we're going to fill these up with our okra mix. And guys, we are not going to worry about how much meal goes in here with it. So I'm just going to get a scoop. And I'm going to start filling up my bag. Whoa! <laughs> so we have had a mess. So this is tonight's dinner. Yep, that'll be tonight's dinner. <laughs> anyway, you fill that bag all the way up, guys. dinner. We will cut that up with a green onion, mix that up with a green onion, and um, fry it in the skillet. Not a green onion, a tomato, a green tomato. All right, so that'll be tonight with a green tomato and an onion chopped up in it, fried in a skillet with some oil. Um, how many of you have ever fried your okra that way? I mean, we don't batter it. We just put it right like that. Um, that is how we do it. So, all right. So I do not want this bag to be extremely full. So I am going to go ahead and seal it up because I'm going to make this into sort of somewhat portionable. Um, and I'm going to squeeze all this air out of here that I can and zip it up while it's folded down. Notice the bag doesn't have a lot of air in it. So. This is what we did. Fold it down, squish all that air out, and zip her up while she's down. Voila. All right, we're gonna keep going and we're just gonna stick that in the freezer. And it's good to go, guys. Just get it in the freezer soon. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Y'all make sure you give us a like. Make sure you leave us a comment. Let us know what else you want us to do. Let us know what you want us to work on. Let us know what you want us to film for you. If you think we're doing something wrong, please tell us because we like to learn too. And if there's something you want to learn, let us know and we'll see if we can help. Um, guys, give us, give us some praise. I mean, you know, we like to hear what a good job we're doing every now and then. <laughs> Because it's hot out here. Oh my goodness, it's hot out here. Anyway, y'all share. Share with your friends. Help us get new eyes on our videos and things. Guys, subscribe. Um, subscribe to our channel. And hit that notification bell. It'll let you know when there's new videos out. Y'all, I've got all this stuff in front of me to go. So, I'm going to get off here and go back to cutting okra. Bye, guys. <laughs>